the Hager's Reflex RS is one of those machines that really splits opinion. In the resin printing world, plenty of people can't stand the idea of being locked into a closed ecosystem. No access to the materials and print settings you might be used to on other printers. They see the proprietary resin requirement as a deal breaker. I've read comments like, it's a decent printer, but if Hagear drops support or hikes resin prices, you're stuck. And I get it, nobody likes feeling boxed in, but for others, that closed ecosystem is exactly what makes the Reflex RS so appealing. They love the convenience. Open Blueprint Studio, pick your printer, project type, resin, and detail level, drop your model, orient it, and hit auto support, slice, and print. No fiddling, no dialing settings, just consistent high quality results. It's a setup built for reliability, and it's been steadily improving since the day it launched. Hagear hasn't just sat back and coasted on that reputation. Over time, they've expanded the resin library, PAS 10 in three different colors, a flexible modeling resin, and high precision resin, and even engineering grade options like ABS-like PAU 11 and heat resistant PAH 10. On top of that, they've been rolling out software and hardware updates that make the printer more capable now than it was a year ago. One of those updates led to their newest model, the Reflex RS Turbo. It uses the same platform as the original RS, but with a new higher performance screen that improves speed and print quality. The best part is if you already own the original RS, you don't need to buy a whole new machine. You can upgrade it yourself. That's exactly what I'm doing today, taking my original RS from last year's review and giving it the turbo treatment with a DIY screen replacement. I'll walk you through the install and calibration, then put it up against its pre-upgraded self running test prints with some of those newer resins to see just how much more performance the turbo brings to the table. But first things first, personally, I'm in the second camp. I don't love the resin printing process, in fact, I kind of hate it. Anything that makes it quicker, easier, and better instantly wins me over. For general purpose work and miniature printing, out of all the machines I own, the Reflex RS has been my go-to. The resins just work. Blueprint Studio is ridiculously simple, and nothing, even some of the best pre-supported models, beats its auto support system. I get perfect prints. It just works. That said, while I was prepping for this video, I did find a situation that gives the Reflex RS a real challenge, heat. Now, I do all my printing out in my garage because while well, I love my family and our pets and I care about their health, but it's the peak of summer and even here in Colorado, the heat's been brutal. My garage has been hitting over 90 degrees Fahrenheit or over 32 Celsius. The optimal temperature for the Hagear's PAS10 black resin I'm using is around 23 to 25 Celsius. The Reflex RX actually monitors the environmental conditions and compensates automatically. As it gets warmer, the resin becomes less viscous, which means it cures faster. The printer knows this and responds by reducing exposure times. But for certain projects, there's only so much it can do. My first clue something was off came when I printed this ultralight mouse body. Normally it should take 13 to 14 hours. This time it finished in under seven. And for the first time, there were obvious layer shifts. That happened because while the printer can speed up layer exposure on its own, it can't also add extra supports on the fly to match the speed. Later that evening, the temperature dropped to around 80 Fahrenheit, and that was enough to successfully print this Wukong statue. The print finished, but it still looks slightly overexposed. This is one of those cases where not being able to fine tune the UV dose for each layer becomes a limitation. So, hey gears, if you're watching, just like many of our garages and workshops that aren't heated in the winter, hence the built-in heaters, they're also not cooled in the summer. So you might want to think about adding resin profiles for higher than normal environmental temps. Anyway, I've been working on a climate controlled printing space for my reviews. It's not finished yet, but for now, I brought the Reflex RS inside to the constant 22 degrees Celsius room and reprinted that ultralight mouse body. This time it took the usual 14 plus hours and came out perfectly. I even filled the build plate with miniatures and they printed great too. We'll compare these results directly to the Reflex RS Turbo as soon as the upgrade is installed. So let me walk you through that process now. Now, Hagears didn't just throw in the same Aptis 10.1 inch 16K monochrome LCD display that pretty much every other current MSLA printer is using. 
I've viewed a couple of those and we've seen that unless they're implemented properly, they don't actually offer any more visible detail than good 8K or 12K screens. And in some case, they can even look worse. Instead, Hate Gears re-engineered their existing 8K display. It still holds the same 10.3 inches with a 29.7 micron XY pixel size, but they've added an amber tinted layer that acts as both a UV filter and a protective layer. This controls the amount and wavelength of light hitting the resin. Now, without getting too deep into the nerdy science, that amber layer essentially works like an optical gate. It blocks everything except the specific 405 nanometer UV light needed to cure the resin. It also reduces light scatter, which should give you crisper layer edges and finer surface detail. Hate Gear claims this design delivers a contrast ratio of 566 to 1, or nearly 60% higher than the old screen. Better control of the light means each layer cures more evenly, which can reduce cure times and in turn speed up prints. We'll put all that to the test, but first, let me show you how easy it is to actually swap the screen. Hate Gears built the replacement process right into the printer. In the settings menu, there's an option called Screen Update and Validation. Select that and it walks you through the steps, including automatically identifying the exact screen you're installing via an NFC tag. Once that's done, power down the printer and remove the old screen. That's part pretty straightforward. Peel off the screen tape, remove four screws in the brackets, and unplug the ribbon cable. With the screen out, I noticed a little dust on the Fresnel lens underneath, so I took the opportunity to clean it carefully with a lens wipe. Then I peeled the protective films off the new screen and installed it in reverse order, plugged in the ribbon cable, secured the four brackets, and reattached the NFC reader. The new screen ships with a screen protector already applied and includes two new screen tapes. Before applying one, I powered the printer back on to make sure the installation was good to go. Once again, the printer guided me through the validation, projecting test patterns on the screen. Everything was crisp with no dead pixels in sight. With that confirmed, I applied the new screen tape and dropped in a clean resin vat. Because the screen was replaced, the printer needs to be recalibrated. The upgrade kit includes a calibration tool, and just like the rest of the process, it's menu driven and nearly automatic. Select the frame energy calibration in the settings, plug the tool into the USB port, position the sensor where it shows you, and the printer automatically calibrates the frame energy. Once that was complete, I took one more step, checking that the build plate was still perfectly parallel to the new screen. Again, the menu offers a guided automated check, and in my case, everything was still spot on. And that's it. Just like operating the Reflex RS, Hate Gears had made servicing it simple enough that you don't need to be an engineer to do it. And remember, even if you're not planning to upgrade your RS to the turbo spec, the LCD is still a consumable part with a limited lifespan. At some point, it will need replacing, and it's nice to know that when the day comes, the process is that easy. With the upgrade complete, I moved the printer back into the print room, filled the vat with the same PAS 10 black resin, and started the exact same ultralight mouse print job. I didn't even need to re-slice the project. The printer knows it's an RS Turbo now and automatically applies the updated settings. All I did was select the last print from the history and hit reprint. The job finished with no apparent issues and clocked in at 13 hours and 33 minutes, or about 41 minutes quicker than before. From the history, I also reprinted the plate of DM Stash miniatures, and here the turbo upgrade only shaved off about two minutes. Now, these results are based on this specific workload and resin combination, so depending on the part geometry and material, your gains may be more or less dramatic. When it came to print quality, the difference on the mouse was significant. Both prints looked great at first glance, but measurements told a clearer story. The turbo version held much tighter tolerances, averaging about 3.5% variation from the CAD model compared to 8.4% for the RS. Holes were rounder, straight edges were straighter, and angles were more precise. That's a definite improvement in dimensional accuracy, especially for functional parts and engineering projects. With the miniatures, I couldn't see much of a difference. Both sets looked essentially identical, which is what I expected. The PAS-10 resin is a low-cost general purpose modeling resin. It's designed for quickly and affordably printing models during your sculpting phase. And on the original RS screen, it's 
already pretty much to the limit of the detail that it can capture. The amber screen doesn't offer much improvement here. For final production work though, Headgears makes a PAP-10 resin which can capture much final detail. I printed a couple of miniatures with a PAP-10 in black and compared them to ones I printed before the upgrade and here the improvement was obvious. These were sliced with anti-aliasing but fuzzing off and while it might be hard to see on camera, the difference is there. The fine details are sharper and crisper, especially on the mahogany model. Skin textures are more defined and it's most noticeable in the tassels hanging from the mantle and on the bottom pillows. They're more pronounced with the turbo upgrade. The Reflex RS Turbo has objectively surpassed the level of detail I've seen from several popular Aptus 16K screen equipped printers. And it seems like it's trying to move in on form labs when it comes to engineering resins. I tested their PAU11 ABS-like resin and their heat-resistant PAH10 resin, and the results were excellent. For the PAH10, I purposely chose rectangular and angular functional parts, a microcomputer enclosure and a headlight bracket. And while both printed cleanly, I did notice a bit of horizontal line artifacting on some of the flat surfaces, but for this type of part, it doesn't really negatively affect functionality or the finished look. Prints like these have traditionally been better suited for FDM, so for comparison, here's the same headlight bracket printed in glass-filled nylon on my GD Plus 4. The Heat Gears version is even more precise and has similar mechanical qualities with dimensional accuracy ranging from dead on to at most 50 microns off. It's also a very rigid print and heat resistant up to 95 Celsius or 203 Fahrenheit. For the PAU11, I printed the same enclosure along with a phone stand and a mount for my Samsung T7 SSD. These came out just as well, dimensionally accurate with the PAU11 living up to its ABS light claim for durability. You can see I had to put some real stress on the phone stand to get it assembled, but the parts bent without breaking and everything went together without issues. They're also the first Hay Gears resins that I've seen use a heated curing process available in the Ultracraft Cure. If Hay Gears keeps releasing engineering resins at this level of quality, they're going to start giving Form Lab some real competition. On top of the user upgradable hardware and an ever expanding material catalog, Haygears keeps pushing out software improvements. The printer's firmware gets regular updates and whenever a bug is discovered or someone points one out, they seem to fix it pretty quickly. Blueprint Studio, their custom slicer, is also getting steadily better. It's already one of the easiest MSLA slicers you'll ever use, and since I started working with it last year, it's come a long way. They've removed the login requirement, added multi-build plate support, and improved the auto layout function so you can overlap rafts and pack a ridiculous number of models into a single build plate. Their auto support system is still so good that I just use it exclusively, even over high quality pre-supported models. And now, if the only version of model I can find is pre-supported, there's a built-in tool that strips those supports away so I can use Blueprint's auto supports instead. If the algorithm adds too much or not quite enough, I can quickly edit the supports and even optimize the truss structure. That said, you still can't access or change slicer settings like exposure dose, lift height or speed, rest time, light off delay, or light intensity. I'd love to see Hay Gears offer an open material mode similar to what Formlab provides. Even without that though, I've had success running plenty of third-party resins, most often transparent ones, which Hay Gears hasn't yet released for the Reflex RS. In most cases, the PAP-10 profile has worked perfectly with them. So, is the amber screen upgrade worth it for the Reflex RS? Well, like most things, it depends. If you already own the original RS and your screen still has plenty of life, uh, probably not. I'd wait until it's time for a replacement and do the upgrade then. At that point, it's just gonna come down to cost. The amber screen is only about $10 more than the original, but you'll also need the calibration tool, which adds another 150 bucks. Now, if you're deciding between buying the $800 Reflex RS and the $950 Reflex RS Turbo, I'd say go with the Turbo, not just for the potential speed and quality gains, depending on resin, but also for one big long-term benefit, 
One of the perks of the Amber screen is that by filtering UV light, it should significantly increase the screen's lifespan. Hagegears claims up to 1 million printed layer, which works out to roughly 1,000 print hours at 2.5 to 3 second layer exposures. I obviously haven't validated that claim yet, but if it's accurate, it would put the Turbo right up there with some of the best prosumer printers on the market and could save you money in the long run. And here, again, is where I want to be transparent with you. I'm very experienced with resin printing. That's why companies send me their machines to review. I'm also an electronics engineer, so I understand the mechanics behind these printers, and I can make pretty much any resin work with any printer. I know what all the settings do beyond just layer exposure time and how each one affects print quality. Despite that experience and despite owning dozens of resin printers, the only two I reach for when I'm printing for myself are the Reflex RS for things like miniatures and statues, and the Formlabs Form 4 for practical engineering folks' projects. Because the Reflex is simple, quick, reliable, and time is money. And I'm not the only one. Other enthusiasts I've spoken to, some who are open about it, like Ross aka Fohammer, and others who keep it quieter, also pretty much default to the Reflex or Reflex RS, even with a collection of printers at their disposal. But what impresses me the most about Haygears, when they first hit the market, they were seemingly locked down tight, but they've evolved into one of the most customer friendly brands out there. I've seen people buy new printers only to have the company drop a slightly upgraded version a few months later. I'm looking at you, Elegoo, leaving customers with FOMO. Haygears does the opposite. Sure, they're still features I'd like to see, a built-in camera for live monitoring, a heated vat as standard to match the competition, and an open materials mode, but offering simple DIY screw-in upgrades is a huge win, so my verdict hasn't really changed from my initial review. If proprietary resins and lockdown slicer settings are a deal breaker for you, well, this isn't your printer, and honest, you, you probably didn't make it this far into the video, I don't mean that to be judgmental. This machine isn't for everyone. If your projects and resin needs are very specific and you have the know-how to dial in custom resin profiles, something like the Anycubic Photon Mono M7 Pro might suit you better. Once you've fine-tuned your supports and slicer settings in Chitu Box, Lychee, or whatever slicer you prefer, that workflow can be just as simple and reliable with results that are nearly identical. But if what you want is the simplest MSLA workflow possible, reliable, high quality prints without having to figure out which resin works best for which project or learning what every slicer setting does and how it affects print quality, if you want a resin printer with basically zero learning curve, then at this price point, nothing on the market beats the Reflex RS. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button. It really helps the channel. If you want to see more in-depth reviews and DIY upgrade projects like this, consider subscribing so you don't miss the next one. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.